Welcome to the last set of news to the top stories in cryptocurrency and assets and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, it's really one big story, and there's a lot of different multifaceted aspects of it. But it's titled Cardano approaches a new major upgrade as ADA posts an inspired rally. This is really all has to do with moving forward with the roadmap as far as Cardano and moving into the Gogan era as far as smart contracts. And there's a, a lot of different minutia that we have to take a look at and really disseminate to find out exactly what's going on. And uh, hopefully I'll get a little help from uh, my friend Hashoshi, another YouTuber, to explain uh, some more of the technical side. So uh, we'll go over all that and there's a lot of information to go over. But first, let's take a look at what is going on in the market. So today it is February 17th, 16th, 11.40 a.m. Uh, Paso, Texas time. So here's what we got. Uh, again, uh, I think that Bitcoin went above 50,000 for a very short amount of time. But like I've always said, when there are round numbers, people are going to take profits. So just expect a retracement. That's just how it is. But uh, I'm happy for that because, uh, you know, if you would dollar cost average, uh, this would be a pr great time for you. Bitcoin, I have stopped purchasing. Uh, I have my limit at, and I already have my positions and I've already talked about how I believe it's going to go to 150,000 and then it's going to retrace to around 30, 40,000. So anything over that, I don't see a point in actually purchasing anything else. I'm uh, trying to get more into the DeFi space because I think that is the, uh, the biggest opportunity for growth. And I look at uh, places like Aave and Synthetics, which I'll be doing more of a, a video on later. Anyhow, uh, Ethereum down to 1744 after getting to 1800. So that's good. Tether's Tether, yeah, sure. Polkadot, and again, in that fourth spot and uh, up 3% for almost 30 bucks. It's amazing uh, the, the kind of run that Polkadot has had. And uh, again, if you're going to bet on anything, you're going to invest in anything, invest in people. So if you take a look at um, what I call the Ethereum Mafia, kind of like the PayPal Mafia, you got Gavin Wood, Dr. Gavin Wood, who created Ethereum alongside uh, Vitalik Buterin, Charles Hoskinson uh, for Cardano. Uh, so you take a look at those two products like, or three products like, you know what, I'll bet on those people because they've already done uh, big things. So that's why you see Cardano, Polkadot, and Ethereum pretty much in the same place. XRP is uh, down a bunch, and that is because uh, there was an article which talked about how uh, Ripple and the SEC looks like they're not going to be able to come to an agreement. And uh, if you know anything about cases and lawsuits, you know this could drag out for a, quite a long time. I'm not here to bust anybody's bubble. But I've been through a lawsuit and I can tell you right now it is long, it is expensive, and uh, there's a lot of different circumstances to really get out of it. And there's a lot of factors in play. So if you think this is going to happen anytime soon, I don't think that's happening. So sorry. Anyhow, Binance coin down 3%. Litecoin, what else we got? Anything up majorly? Not really. Ooh, 16% for Cosmos. I don't have Cosmos, so I don't really care. And again, uh, on my channel, just so you know, I'm super biased towards... <laughs> <laughs> all the things that I own, and uh, just how it is. But uh, if you're a Cosmos holder, congratulations. Good for you. Ave, I'm down 12%. Hey, what are you going to do? Beta token down 6%. Everything's down right now. And again, uh, once we hit these highs, we're going to see a retracement. Let's take a look at, first of all, let me blow this up so somebody can see it. Sorry about that. And what I want to take a look at is what is going on as far as the sentiment of the market. So let me just click on this projected range. Okay, so this is from Trade the Chain, and you can take a look at what the sentiment is as far as like tweets and all the things that are going on in the different uh, websites and blogs and Twitterverse. So I don't know any of these. I don't know Telos, Cream Finance, Mainframe Horizon, Blockstack, but apparently, hey, Telos, Telos is going to go up 16%, maybe down 13 in the next hour. That's kind of a crap to range. Trust Swap, uh, negative four to plus four, Grin, yeah, whatever. Maker, Celsius, that's pretty interesting. Still bearish. I see it going down. But uh, if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description. Let's just jump into today's top story because this, to me, really is the big thing. And Cardano is just one of those projects that uh, takes a long time. They've done a lot of different, uh, I mean, to really just to creep into things. But I think it's going to be big. Look, we're almost hitting its all time high of like $1.13, $1.18, somewhere around there. We were at, uh, I think, 93 cents at one point. We'll take it. So what's going on? What is the catalyst for what's happening? So there's been a major up upgrade, and this is from the uh, all the ADA posts. So just to go back in time, this article was written on February 14th, but it states here on February 3rd, Cardano's development firm, uh, IOHK, uh, successfully connected the hard fork and applied the Gogan native token upgrade, known as the Mary upgrade to the Cardano's testnet, which transforms the blockchain into a multi-asset network similar to Ethereum. And uh, the things that really vary as far as Ethereum is fees, gas fees. And um, there was a, 
there was a, a tweet from Ray Yusuf. He is the owner of Paxful. And he talked about how great uh, non-fungible tokens are if it wasn't for the fact that it just costs like 170 bucks just to get it up and going if you want to do a non-fungible token. And we all see these with like the fees for ERC-20. And we'll get into that. But, uh, you know, this upgrade we'll, we'll talk about in a bit is really going to decrease uh, almost to nothing our fees. And it's pretty amazing how they do it. So um, the team expects to have launch the main net by the end of February. So let's back up. First of all, let's take a look at what they're talking about as far as uh, the Gogan roadmap and Cardano. I will link this in the description. It's just the roadmap.cardano.org. And what it talks about here is, actually, let me blow this up so everybody can see it. It makes a lot, a lot more sense if I can actually show you what you're looking at. So Gogan itself has the ability to build dApps, decentralized apps on Cardano's Solid foundation of peered reviewed research and high assurance development. So that was the big thing. Because when people always talk to me, they're like, well, what has it done? Who is building on it? What is going on? But you have to understand, you couldn't really build too much on it because they need the Gogan to, to come into play. So now that Gogan is here, uh, now you can start to have dApps. And they've built their own language, Plutus. They've done a lot of things as far as like making it very easy to uh, build on it. So I expect things to take off. And the real question was always like, well, why the heck does it take so long? See this part right here where it says peer reviewed research and people are like, what are they talking about? And all this means, let me, let me come back here. All this means for, this, for this, this peer reviewed research is that they actually put these papers out and they don't have people like inside their team go, yeah, it looks good. What they do is they, they send it out and they say, we want you, uh, any kind of um, academic uh, different properties, or different schools or, or, or different people to actually take a look at that that know about blockchain. Take a look at what we are proposing. Would this actually work or is this just not a really good thing? And it's 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 always done, well, it's done a lot. Uh, as far as medicine, as far as pharmaceuticals, they want to do peer-reviewed research. So they take they take a look and say, this is what we have. Tell us if this is total bunk or if this is actually going to work. And this is they are the only ones that actually do this. So I understand now why they do it. Uh, just because, you know, uh, the same thing as far as medicine and, uh, and med medications go or, or the medical field, they can take a look at this and go, you know, hey, uh, tell us what you think. And so far it has come back very positive. And this is the thing as far as like taking these small incremental steps to make sure it's done right. Think about some DeFi products that you know about right now. How many of those have crashed and burned just because they're trying to throw things out there? And I got to look, for, I got to tell you. For what I do, as far as an entrepreneur, I'm the same way. I just throw stuff out until it breaks. I'm like, well, that didn't work out. We'll do something else. Well, let's do this, let's do that. But when you're playing around with people's money, um, it's a little bit different than an actual product. Like if a product comes out and rolls out, I'm like, oh, that didn't work out, so we'll just change it. But when you're talking about people's money and life savings, you can't do that. When you talk about going into like Sub-Saharan Africa and making a payment system, you can't really do that. When you're talking about you know, bringing in these like Fortune 500 companies and then just things just screw up left and right, you can't do that. And I get now why they have done all these things and it makes a lot of sense. Anyhow, let's, uh, let's move back here. So this is one of the goals for the Golgan era has been the creation of Plutus, a purpose-built smart contract development language, an execution platform using the functional program uh, Haskell. This allows uh, one code base to support both on and off-chain components, improving the uh, coherency and usability of the development experience compared with existing smart contract implementations. So jumping back to finish up this article, it talks about for the first time users on the Cardano blockchain will be able to create their own tokens, be it fungible tokens or NFTs. And if, uh, if you've been aware of what is going on, I think NFT is going to be the next big thing. Uh, I have not uh, kept up to date with it, but uh, I will be delving into that a lot deeper uh, moving forward. And then this was the interesting part. And we'll get into this with hash in a bit, but Cardano's token design. So the first major difference following the upgrade is that there will be no execution fees, none. So in, in Ethereum, we could call those gas fees, but on the Cardano native blockchain, there's going to be uh, no execution fees. Uh, this is from uh, Heinrich Pfeiffer, General Secretary of the Cardano Foundation. He states, native tokens on Cardano are forged on chain with no need for a smart contract and therefore no execution fees required to transact native tokens uh, on Cardano. Instead, Sending tokens requires a nominal fee called the minimal ADA value. And he talks about how you can actually bundle these together and it'll increase the fee just a little bit, but uh, not too much. So again, when we take a look at what's going on with Ethereum, uh, 
it's a great platform and everybody's building on it. But the reason is, is because, you know, you really couldn't do too much with Cardano. Now that the golden era is here, people can start to uh, create dApps and then those fees are going to go down. I see uh, a pretty good market niche for Ethereum to really plug into. Uh, will they be the dominating force? Who knows? But I think, again, that the, there is enough room for uh, two major players. So uh, let me skip this part and then just go to the last piece. So the big thing for me is about usability because I'm not a programmer, but when it states here, it says uh, the fact that Cardano has been implemented in Haskell, a functional programming language that is known for its high liability apps, could open up different business use cases involving large enterprises and even governments. And Pfeiffer finally states Cardano may stand up or may stand to capture an altogether different share of the market than Ethereum that have national level identity solutions, backend financial infrastructure, and powerful enterprise use cases. So what is so important about Haskell and Plutus? And it really comes down to that Gogan roadmap. So let's jump over there and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about. And then the Gogan era also encompasses work to make Cardano accessible to wider audiences via Marlowe, which is good for me. This allows financial and business experts with no previous technical knowledge, such as myself, to create smart contracts. So Marlowe and the Marlowe Playground simplify the process for creating smart contracts for financial applications, allowing subject matter experts to directly contribute without requiring deep programming skills. This could be a big boom for potentially DeFi decentralized finance. So remember when, I, when I, we, we talked about this in the past, we say, if you don't know what to pick as far as DeFi, you don't really know about Aave, you don't really know about Compound, you don't really know about synthetics or, or Wi-Fi, just buy Ethereum because everything's built in Ethereum. However, I think that may change. So for all this stuff, I mean, even for me, like I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, what the heck? It's kind of confusing what they're talking about. So really what I want to do is get somebody who's an expert, who's actually a programmer and knows what the heck they're talking about. And that's why I brought in my friend Hashoshi. So uh, let's jump over uh, to the Zoom meeting and let me have Hashoshi actually explain what the heck is going on.